That is their largest spawn to date. It surpasses the spawn that I lost in November. And the excess male got into the cave and ate some of the eggs. Out of the five spawns I've had, I've only ever had to do that once. I haven't really mentioned to you guys what happened with the excess pair. The way she interacts with her fry, ushering them back into her shell. G'day guys, Jason here. Welcome back to my fish room. So in this week's video, I thought I'd do my March 2021 fish room update tour. So let's get straight into the video. This is my Neolemprologus Leilupi Aquarium. I have now got a breeding pair in here. And as you can see, there are a load of fry. There's two spawns of fry in here. And if you look close, you'll be able to see the two different sizes that I have. The second spawn was larger because when they spawned the first time, I had two other Leilupi in here, a total of four. And the excess male that I purchased got into the cave and ate some of the eggs. So the second spawn, the parents were able to raise up the brood without any predators in the aquarium. So I've been able to successfully step breed the Leilupi in this small aquarium and it is actually still their quarantine tank. If you've been on my channel for a while, you know that I had spawned them twice in the month of January. However, I have since spawned them again. I actually can't see where the female laid the eggs. I can't see the spawn. However, I know she has spawned because she looks very, very skinny and she was pretty large the day before the spawn and that's what I've noticed with the Leilupi. Every two to three weeks now, they seem to be spawning and she had lost considerable amount of weight overnight. So I dare say she has spawned and I think she has spawned just here, just behind it, underneath this cave because she keeps going there whenever I accidentally, say, scare the fish, she'll go there. When I'm about to feed them, I appear at the front of the tank, she'll rush to that area of the aquarium and it seems like the eggs are in that spot. She'll face the front of the tank behind that rock. So I dare say that the eggs are there and I expect them to hatch in another day. That will be day three, at which point she might move the fry to another location with the aquarium to prevent the older fry from eating the newly hatched brood. I'm going to try and get these guys out of this aquarium. I don't know how the hell I'm going to do it. So I really don't want to disturb the parents, but these fry are fast. I know they're fast because when I appear again at the top of the fish tank to say feed them there, live baby brine shrimp they just scatter around the aquarium and they're super fast so pretty good success rate with these way better than i ever expected but anyway that's my update with the neolamprologus leilupi so this is my white alto lamprologus calvus fry tank and these are the guys that were spawned in december i pulled them out of their parents tank on christmas eve the 24th of december 2020 and you can see now they're obviously just over two months old and hopefully you can see on camera the size difference in some of the fry all these fry were born at the exact same time but there is already a noticeable size difference in amongst the fry some are obviously larger than the other by about one and a half lengths and some of them have what appears to be a higher back already. They're already forming that calvus shape. Two months in, you can see how much size some of them have put on. Now, you are meant to separate your calvus fry when the larger ones get larger than the smaller ones. However, out of the five spawns I've had, I've only ever had to do that once with one fry. So it hasn't been a big issue for me. Next to them are their younger brothers and sisters. So let's have a look at their tank and see how they're going. So here are their younger brothers and sisters. And these guys were pulling them out basically around the 10th of February over the course of three days. So on the 10th of February, I caught 88 fry. And then over the next two days, I caught a handful of fry, totaling all up 97 fry. So that is their largest spawn to date. It surpasses the spawn that I lost in November. And I'm really pleased that these guys have been doing so well and obviously relieved that I've worked out what was killing the fry. If you haven't seen that video and how I worked it out, you can watch that video right here. But putting in a sand bed, making sure the tank is very, very clean. I can't stress you guys doing that enough if you intend to breed Alto Lamprologus calvus or Alto Lamprologus compressorceps. Keep the bottoms of your tank clean. Use a very clean sand bed if you can. If you can't, just make sure the glass is extremely clean because calvus fry and compressorceps fry sit on the bottom of the tank even though they reach the free swimming stage. They like to sit on the bottom of the tank for at least a month, even up to eight weeks. I'm looking at the other tank that I just showed you and I've got fry still sitting on the bottom of the tank and they just hop up to pick up the food that sweeps past them. If the bottom of the tank is dirty, your fish can possibly get an infection and die and that is what happened to my 95 fry in november 2020 just learn from my mistakes heed my advice and make sure the bottom of your tank is clean for these guys 
You don't need the bottom of your tank absolutely spotless for, say, mouth breeding cichlids, but Tanganyikan cichlids like these guys that sit on the bottom of the tank for a couple months after they become free swimming, so I am constantly target feeding their mother, the female white calvus in my breeding pair, and I'm now getting spawns almost once a month, about maybe every five to six weeks. And I highly recommend you do that too if you intend to spawn calvus or compressor seps, target feed your females. So since December, I've talked about my Neil Amprologus Leilupi for a while now. I've mentioned them a lot, and I haven't really mentioned to you guys what happened with the excess pair, because I did buy four from the aquarium store. So I put my excess Leilupi in this aquarium for quarantine, and these guys have finished their quarantine. They're now plugged into the system, and the male, he was really bashing up the smaller Leilupi. Now, I assume that this guy is a male because of the size of the fish and the pointed dorsal and anal fins. Now, I assume the other fish was a female just because of her smaller size and dorsal fin not being as pointed. I had no option, I had to separate them from the breeding pair. I popped them in this tank and the larger Leilupi in this aquarium was really attacking the smaller Leilupi in this aquarium. One day I come home, I look at the tank and I see this eggs on the back of the tank. I couldn't believe it. I've ended up with two breeding pairs from the four that I purchased. I really thought I'd be lucky to get even one pair to get two breeding pairs from the four that I purchased is extremely lucky from adults. You usually have to buy juveniles, grow them up together, let them pair form naturally. It is unlikely that that will happen all the time when you're picking out adult fish to try and spawn. There's no guarantee just picking out a male and a female that that would form a pair. It depends on a lot of factors, such as the aggression of the male, the type of fish that they are. If they are actually true male and female fish, there are some species of Tanganyikan cichlids that are difficult to pick out the different sexes, such as Neolamprologus tetracephalus. They're very difficult to sex. These guys are spawned once, the female picking at the eggs, moving them to the saucer at the back of the aquarium. That was about two to three weeks ago. I have never seen the fry. So I suspect the male may have eaten the fry on the female. This is the male that ate the fry from the previous breeding pair. However, they have spawned again. They spawned the same day as my previous breeding pair spawned for their third time. I noticed the female, she almost had a hollow gut, so really, really skinny all of a sudden, whereas the previous days leading up to that, she was really fat and plump, and then all of a sudden she was extremely skinny. So she did definitely spawn again, but this time she spawned in the terracotta pot. First time she spawned on the back pane of glass, and then she moved the fry into the terracotta saucer. Now she's spawned directly in that terracotta saucer. I can tell that she has, she keeps going into that saucer. So hopefully this time the spawn is successful and the male doesn't eat the fry. I'm assuming the male ate the fry. I never saw it actually happen. I never saw fry at all. So I can only assume that that's what's happened. I do keep feeding this aquarium fry food, such as live microworms and baby brine shrimp, just in case that there are fry in that saucer, but I've never seen them. And these fry are my Lamprologus ocellatus gold. They're amongst some of the youngest fry I have in the fish room at the moment. And there's approximately a hundred in this aquarium. And they're about six weeks old here. I do have the adult trio still spawning. And it's the first time in a while that they have accepted more than one generation of fry in the aquarium. Normally, if I don't get the fry out soon enough, they will eat the older fry that are in the aquarium and then spawn. However, this time around, they haven't done that. They have left another generation of fry in the tank and they are spawning again. So I've got two generations of Lamprologus ocellatus gold in the same aquarium. And they haven't done that in ages. Really surprised by that. So here is one of my female Lamprologus ocellatus gold guarding her fry at the entrance to her shell. And these guys appeared yesterday. Now they're a little bit more adventurous in the aquarium. They're swimming further and further away from the shell. Yesterday they were just at the entrance. Now they're starting to get about two to three inches away from the shell before they start to return back. On the other side of the aquarium, I have fry that are about two weeks older from both females that are in this aquarium, they've become mixed together. And the second female is kind of guarding them from this female here. I think this female tends to be more aggressive towards older fry, whereas the other female isn't as aggressive and she tolerates those older fry with her current batch of fry. That just shows you the different characters you can get with your shell dwelling cichlids, especially these guys, Lamprologus ocellatus gold. And the longest these guys have gone without attacking older fry is about a month. I love watching the fry at this stage interact with the female, the way she interacts with her fry, ushering them back into her shell. They hug that shell, it just looks awesome the way she buries it and just allows that opening to appear. Beautiful colourful fish for a late Tanganyikan secret. 
So if you're after some color, a small fish with a lot of character, that's from Lake Tanganyika. If you're into Lake Tanganyika cichlids, I really highly recommend that you give these guys a try because you get the best of both worlds. You get the beautiful color, you get the interesting behavior. However, also, they're such a small fish, you can keep them in fairly small aquarium and they're easy to manage. If you were to get larger fish, you need very large aquariums, not a lot more space, not only for the adult fish, but to grow out the fry. These guys don't really need large aquariums. And as you can see, this is their maximum size. The male's about two inches long. The female's just a little over an inch. So very small fish and just amazing to watch the behavior. So there you have it guys, my March 2021 Fish Room Update Tour. I really hope you enjoyed that video and found it informative. If you did, please hit the thumbs up, comment and subscribe buttons. I really would appreciate it. All right guys, I'm gonna wrap this video up now. Thanks heaps for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.